Have you ever jumped out of an aeroplane? Would you dare? I'm not sure I would. Uh, I did give it a go indoors. This is me indoor skydiving. This video is going to uh, help you to explain all of the forces involved in a skydive. And you're going to have to understand a velocity time graph for that skydive. They really like to ask you this question about the forces involved when something is at terminal velocity. So make sure you pay attention. You can express a situation, complicated situation like this one with the forces that are involved. So on my body here, we're going to draw a free body force diagram. Uh, the force that's always going to be there throughout this situation, right from jumping out of the plane here to landing on the ground here, one force is going to be the weight. And that force is caused by gravity. It's always going to be downwards and it's always going to be the same size. The other force to talk about is the drag. And that's going to change at different times during the skydive. So initially, I jump out of the aeroplane and there is only a weight downwards. There's no drag, no drag at all. Uh, as we accelerate, as the person accelerates, you can see the velocity is greater, therefore there's going to be some air resistance. And that air resistance is going to cause a drag. At the moment we're about here, somewhere in the middle of this section of the graph. The weight is still greater than the drag, so there's still a resultant force downwards. So there is still an acceleration. But as that body accelerates, there is going to be more drag and therefore less acceleration. So in this section, the weight is greater than the drag. As we accelerate, we're going to reach a point at which drag becomes equal to weight. Now this is this situation here at the top where we've reached what we call terminal velocity where the weight equals the drag. So according to Newton's first law here we've got no resultant force so we've got no acceleration. We've got a steady speed, a constant speed. It's a very high constant speed at this point but the body is not accelerating. I'm in the what we call the body flying position. Belly down flying position is a nice steady speed, nice stable flight. Now eventually I'm going to get close to the land. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to open my parachute. I'm going really fast at this point. So I've got this huge surface area. I have suddenly I've got a very high drag. So now we've got a resultant force upwards. So uh, there's going to be a change in my speed. I'm going to decelerate. And you can see during this section of the graph, I'm going to decelerate very rapidly. So I'm going to lose all that speed very, very, very quickly. At this point, the drag is greater than the weight, as you can see here in the diagram. Therefore, you've got that overall force. You've got a very rapid deceleration. As we decelerate, gradually drag gets less and less and less until once more we've got a situation where the two forces are equal. Therefore, you've got a new situation, a new much lower constant velocity, a new much lower terminal velocity. This once more, this is the situation where the weight is equal to the drag. So therefore, there's no acceleration. And then finally, you see this very last little bit of the graph here is, well, safely landed. OK, I hope that makes sense. That's expressing this complex situation using two forces. Have a little think about some other situations where we re something reaches terminal velocity.